Hello and welcome to Leash Dad's podcast. That is Justin doing some headbanging. Perks of being and a dad. Yeah, we are doing the perks of being a father tonight. No, uh, I apologize for daddy. the uh, low <laughs> being a daddy. Be you know, I apologize for the low energy. But as I was just explaining to Justin. Uh, with since tomorrow will be my second week of sobriety, and uh, Dry, my man. sleep schedule is kicking my ass. Uh, so I am I am very sleepy. <laughs> you you should explain your sleep schedule. Is it shit, or what's? I mean, I know you said you've been sober. You'll be sober for two weeks, um, or a little over two weeks. At you know at the point. no tomorrow will be two. Tomorrow will be two weeks. But by the time it airs, it'll be over two weeks. Oh, true. Well, so anywho, you know, if if anybody uh, listening has gone through any sort of sobriety uh, after a very long time of drinking, uh, you know, drinking messes with your sleep in an irreversible way. And I guess I really never understood that. That oh no, I I sleep great when I'm you know six beers into a night. Uh, no, that I may fall asleep faster, but the quality of sleep is subpar when I, when I have a few in me, as I've learned these past two weeks, uh, I stay asleep longer. I no longer snore and which I did some research the other day where I actually have a little bit of intolerance to alcohol because unlike some people. When I ingest alcohol, my nose, my sinuses, like, almost slam shut within, like, the first 15 minutes of me consuming alcohol. And it's been that way for a long time, and I just thought it was part of drinking and not realizing that it was actually an issue. And if I stop drinking, it'll go away. And it has. I have had no problem with my sinuses in two weeks, uh, besides just some cold stuff. But again, my, my kids are sick again. Uh, tis winter. No, I'm not surprised not anymore. <laughs> what? Tis not winter. Tis I guess, March. I guess. <laughs> we are but, on our way out. But uh, so the sleep, for some reason, now that I'm sleeping on a regular schedule, I get tired at a certain time. Whereas, and I I could be wrong, I'm not a doctor, and I don't play one on TV, but I assume that when I was consuming the alcohol, the alcohol turns into what, ladies and gentlemen? Sugar. Sugar in your body, and then that messes up your sleep as well as your energy throughout the rest of the night before you go to sleep. So now that I don't have any excess sugar, which I still am limiting myself extremely on added sugars throughout the day, uh, it's just my body is finally back to the way it was uh, in high school. So, did you ever before take naps? You started taking. Yeah, did you? Yeah, uh, before I started drinking, did you take naps in high school? <laughs> did I like have time to take a nap in high school. Not okay. Not in school, but like when you came home, did you ever just like lay down and just pass out? Nope. Oh, I did. I had you know that thing called job. Oh, true. Yeah, I had a summer job. I didn't work in the winter. so oh, my job was all year round. <laughs> yeah, Working at McDonald's, McDonald's all year. Yep. yep, McDonald's. I never got a winter break or a summer break. It was, here you go. School, work, school, work, school, work. So, I mean, for the first couple of years, it was only two and a half hours a day up to like 16 hours a week for being 14, 15. Just to abide so you're by done them. by like seven o'clock every night or the uh, nights you worked four to six thirty, so pretty much. Well, that's not bad. Like, yes, under Wisconsin state law or under the federal law for labor labor laws, I was allowed to work till seven. So like I could work three but, hours, and but with McDonald's and they want to be safe and not get fined by the feds and everything. They would rather just have you work two and a half hours a night, like from four to six thirty. That way, right. if it does get busy, they can have a half hour of leeway 
to try to figure something out and get you out of there before seven o'clock. Because once seven oh. o'clock rolls around, for example, and I or once seven oh one rolls around and I'm still clocked in, they can get hit with a fine. For an, for somebody between the age of fourteen and fifteen. Which I think talking about that, I feel like the way McDonald's has gone about it is great. And I feel that they are the only ones that truly want to take on the responsibility of hiring 14, 15 year olds. I mean, that's just Culver's, how I th- Culver's does. Oh, that's true. Culver's does do that. I feel like, I feel like McDonald's is the one that started the trend though. I oh, could be for wrong. Sure. I mean, yeah, I could be wrong. At least here in Wisconsin, I feel like McDonald's is the one that started that trend. Um, I don't know where it's, what it's like in other states, or maybe I'm even wrong to that point too. Um, then again, I've only, I've only known McDonald's for 10 years of my life, work life, um, and so on and so forth. So I've never kind of went elsewhere. Culver's, I think I've had one friend that I know work there when she turned 14 or so, maybe 15. Um, but other than that, you know, didn't really know many people that just kind of said, yep, I work at bumfuck, uh, I mean, okay, besides working on a farm, like a family farm or anything like that, if you're working for your family, I will say it's a different story. If you're working well, for somebody yeah. else, if you're working for somebody else that's not family, I don't know. But um now, if it's a summer job, things change from a federal standpoint, right? Hours change. I don't think it changes much within your age if you start at fourteen, fifteen. Um but there is this changes to your that can happen so um yeah no i just uh, always feel that i was always working from that standpoint um i never had really time to nap when i uh from after school or anything like that so yeah it's uh you know pleasurable <laughs> yeah yeah i remember how's your week so been uh let's see here the week hasn't been too bad honestly um it's the work week has been weird again uh and by weird i mean we've had the days where you feel like it should be uh busy but yet this week has been kind of slow or not so many patients scheduling maybe it's because they're not able to um i have this week fit in their schedule i don't know but today you know we didn't we didn't have anybody really have like an early appointment so um by early appointment i mean somebody that comes in at 7 45 to start getting their braces off Um, that's really early well think of it this way monday tuesday and thursday are seven o'clock so they have like those people that are getting braces taken off early in the morning have to be there at 6 45 to start the process wow so yeah it's like uh yeah you're missing three hours of school if you're a high schooler or whatever school you're in and uh you're getting your braces off i'm sure kids love it by the way oh i did <laughs> it was always a treat when i had an ortho appointment yeah because i got to skip fucking school I never, I don't know. I actually was, you know, it's sad when you talk about that. I'm actually the one of the kids that hated missing school in a sense. Because I felt like I, ne- I always wanted to have that accomplishment or achievement of having a perfect attendance. Oh. I never got one. Never, ever have I gotten a perfect attendance in my career or high school or my school career. Not even in college. I've skipped a couple of classes. Not, Hell yeah! Not like some, not not like I purposely skipped them. Sometimes I did oversleep, um, class or totally forgot about it. I'm like, oh well, whatever. No sense in going now. Halfway through it. <laughs> did you know I still have nightmares to this day about, about? skipping class and really? realizing that I had a shitload of stuff to do and now I missed it and now I'm gonna fail. Yes, I've had that feeling too. Like, yep, I still have them. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of get them too every now and then. I go, 
shit. I and this is like me going back to school is like, oh fuck, I think I missed a class, or I, mm-hmm. missed, you know, when are my assignments due? Or actually, I still feel like I have forgotten some assignments from school, and I'm like, I don't think I ever actually turned that in on time. Yep. <laughs> or yeah, no. It's not so much a nightmare. It's more like a realization. It's like, hmm, I feel like I know I had a class and I was supposed to turn something in. I forgot. And it's like, hmm, how did I graduate? <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, I hate those dreams. Yeah, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad when you have those types of dreams and you let them actually bug you uh, or scare the living daylights out of you honestly so no, i uh my work week though or my week so far has just been weird um because it's nice when you have the time just to i won't say kick back relax but you don't have to always be in a patient's mouth or you don't feel like everybody is rushing to get one patient in one patient out so on and so forth yeah um now, granted, we want to have all our patients in chairs at you know as soon you know when we can, um, but at the same time, it's not like I mean we had like um, this morning or like well, on Wednesday here if I think about it, um, we had a couple patients come in at like eight o'clock or whatnot, and then we had like an hour gap between them and the next patients. So, like, yes, normally, like, some of their appointments are, like, 30 minutes long. But with how experienced some of my teammates are or the girls are, they can get them done in, like, 15 minutes. So then all of a sudden you have, like, you know, 45-minute gap between patients or whatnot. Yeah, Um, they just move faster. Yeah, they just move faster. And all of a sudden you've got that 45 minute gap that you're sitting here waiting for the next patient to come in. So what do you do? You find things to stock. You find things to uh, continue training on and whatnot. And yeah, you're golden from there. So <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of been the work week though for me. Um, we've had some opportunities to train. I One of my goals so far has not been realized yet, which is actually me getting or having the chance to do repositioning. Um, I've officially made it through. I think everybody that has been trained or has done repositioning of brackets, but now it's my turn to actually be the one sitting in the chair to working on the patient. Um, and that was kind of my goal for the, uh, this past week. And it has not happened yet, but fear not. I have, you know, Thursday, uh, Friday, we do work, but it's not going to be, hopefully it's not going to be like any long appointments. It's all going to be like those 30 minute appointments, but we'll see. I don't know. It all depends on what the day brings, um, which will be really weird. But yeah, no, we'll see how that all turns out there. What about you? How is, how is your work week or just week in general? Yeah. It's all right. I've been I've maintained a positive, well, somewhat positive attitude uh, throughout this this week, so it's going well, and and I'm here today. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I've I've had I've had a good streak of of couple days here. That's good. I like to hear that. I mean, from what we had off camera and everything, I'm glad to see that you're having a positive Patrick outlook. Well, you know. <laughs> That shit that we talked about off camera is, is still going I mean, it's on. Still, it's just it's not that serious. Effect. And, you know, well, it's still serious. Come on. You, well, yeah, it's just not gnawing at me constantly. Oh, so it's improved a little bit. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I've even started, uh, you know, putting little shorts on uh, unlocking jar potential. Um, so that's kind of nice. And nice. It's going going well. Yeah. That's good. I'd like to hear that. Oh, and I, um, shit. My daughter's walking. Oh, hi, nice. Uh, end of an era. Yeah. I, so, I mean, with her walking, you know, I don't know how to feel. It's mixed. It is truly mixed. It's end emotions, of an era. Right? Yeah. It's, it, 
I hate the mixed emotions. I hate yeah. them so much because I I want her to walk, but I don't want her to walk because it means she's growing up. And in a blink of an eye, she'll be really old. I mean, not really old, but she'll be older and bigger. Yeah. And then she won't need me anymore. Or That's what as happens much as she, to kids. Or as much as she used to need me, right? Or as much as she used to need mom. But that's not one of the perks of being a dad. No, one of the perks of being a dad is watching my children grow. Yep. That's the big one. I think it's watching awesome. your creation grow into a an adult that hopefully is happy and successful. Yeah. Successful in their dreams. I wanted to color, clarify that. As long well, I want to, you know, I would go further and be more like realistic dreams, dreams that have an actual reality rather than being like, I don't know, what's a, what's a dream that w- could never become real. Uh, they're bad at, they're not, their grades are just okay and they want to be an astronaut. That'd be a crazy dream. That's just out of the world, out of this world. But, uh, uh, oh. Oh, you set me up for that one. (laughs) Uh, And sometimes it can be a little rocky once you hit the belt. Um, They're getting closer every time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, you gotta shoot for the moon. You, you gotta shoot for the moon. You gotta you, <laughs> aim for the stars. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get too close to the stars, though. Those things heat up. Yep. Um, no, but all seriousness, um, I uh, I'm just trying to think of something like that is a fantasy. I guess that's a good example. Something that, really, you know, you dream of something that's fantasy. So never actually able to come real. Unless you have virtual reality. I mean, I kind of get what you're saying, but at the same, you know, like, for example, I had all the, I had a fantasy of being the lead singer of a band. Always had it I since mean, I was probably like fourth grade. Can I sing? Dreams, well, yeah. no. Could you? The, Probably did I try? Practice. No, I didn't try. Did I, you know, so it was just a fantasy. Now, so yeah, if you're saying that I didn't prepare or I didn't do anything, and all of a sudden I was adamant about being a lead singer, that would be a crazy dream. Because... Uh, I mean, the dream still is possible. It's something that's actually obtainable. I'm talking about something where you dream of it, but you know it's not obtainable. Such as like what, like being I'm prince ta- of a Saudi, being a prince when you don't have any freaking uh, royalty. True. Yes. There you go. That's a until crazy you, dream. That that's insane. I mean, that's, a, that's a crazy dream until you marry somebody into the into the royal bloodline. But then, technically, you're still not a prince or a princess. You just. I don't know how Parliament works. I, I don't. I can't either. even comment. I'm just I'm, okay. So I'm taking this part of the idea of Princess and the Frog, the Disney movie Princess and the Frog, right? So there's the prince. I haven't seen it. Well, long story short, prince is a pr- prince gets turned into a frog. He meets a waitress. The wait. They have the idea of okay. Well, if you kiss me, he, I mean Tiana, she dresses like, right? Yeah, Tiana. Yep, exactly. Yeah. She dresses like a princess because of something happening to her outfit, um, getting spilled or messy from an accident at the table or whatnot. Um, she kisses him. Think he thinks that oh, so she's in a princess outfit. She must be a princess. Well, long behold, she turns into a frog because it counters. But when they spoiler alert for those of you who have not seen it. <laughs> turn away turn off for the next two minutes uh 
as at the end of the movie, Tiana and Naveen get married. And from that point, Tiana now becomes a princess and they kiss and they both become human. Because to, in order to break the spell, you must kiss a princess. Oh, that way. Okay. So she's princess by marriage. Now, if so, I mean, is that possible? Yes. Uh, welcome back for those of you who tuned in <laughs> or tuned back in after this, or avoiding spoilers. Um, but I'm I'm sitting here thinking, it, politically, marriage, whatever, you can become like prince or princess or whatnot. But if you're thinking I want to be a prince or a princess through blood good luck if you're not if you're not part of royalty already it's never going to happen no. unless you go through a political marriage at that point but i don't even think those i mean i don't know how often those happen anymore in this world or where those happen actually so good luck if uh good luck if anything so it's more or less a fantasy of you know that type of fantasy dream I want to dream and I'm going to be a prince when I get older. Or, I mean, you would already technically be a prince. Um, in a way. Or if you want to be king. Yes. Well, well, if you want to be king, you'd have to go through a royal wedding or some sort of political wedding where you're marrying the queen or the princess to take, to be queen. The heir of the heir of the royal family or whatnot. So that type of fantasy, fantasy dream. I mean, now, Jared, like you said, though, your dream of wanting to be a lead singer for a band is still feasible or plausible, right? A famous, do successful it. one, though? Is it going to be successful? Probably not. Realistically, yeah, it probably won't happen it. because you're not, do it, you're not trying to make it happen. You also don't have the time to make it happen either, right? At this no. point. You're working a nine to five. You've got a couple kids that require the att your attention. Um, a working wife as well. So I'm not saying having. I'm digging myself a hole by saying that, <laughs> because believe it or not, I feel like other, most people, you know, some people that do want to be lead singers can be lead, you know, singers for a band, and have two jobs. They'd have the band. They'd also have maybe a job during the day when they don't have a gig or anything. Yeah. But the mm. big, I think the big I think the big kick at that point though is having the support, having the right support, not just a verbal "I will support you," but actually having the support as well. Yeah, having, I agree. Having, you know. Kind of like the means or the show, the actions, right? Actions speak, speak louder than words. So, but yeah, no, I think, I mean, I want, want, that's another, I would say another perk is, like you said, aside of watching from the children growing up and, you know, hopefully being better and, you know, living, trying to live their dreams, make sure they... I don't want to crush their dreams by any means, but I still want them to make sure that they have realistic dreams too. Yes, I'm not going to say stop having these fantasy dreams, but make sure you have some realistic dreams. Have some goals, realistic goals. Um, another another big thing is, again, uh, watching them become better than me. I'd say that's part of the perk too, right? Or, I mean, maybe that falls in line of them growing up. But under them growing up, there's definitely, I mean, them growing up is an umbrella of things. Uh, you pick and choose what you want to see. Hopefully you see them grow up and be more successful than you. I mean, that's part of being a parent. Um, I want to see my children become independent of me. You know, yes, they need me for a little bit, but hopefully I can develop them or grow them into an independent person um, to the point where they come home when they want to, sp I mean, <laughs> want to spend time with me or spend time with their mom uh, or come visit more or less. 
Instead of what? Coming home for like cash or something? Yeah, exactly. Coming home, being needy, and being having to rely on us to ha- continue moving them forward. So, got it. What about what about you? What's something you enjoy about being a father, being a dad? Well, um, I enjoy, you know, like we like we just talked about. Watching them grow up and either a becoming a better version of you, or them finding out their purpose in life and chasing that dream. Um, it's so rewarding to see, you know, something that you created and you've molded throughout the years. Hopefully, in a way that you are proud of. And even if you can look past the times that you're not proud of, uh, when we may you know lose our temper and yell, or um, they you know bad, be a bad influence briefly, and they pick up on it, like you know saying a naughty word, and they repeat it immediately, and then start saying it every time. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, it, it's so rewarding, you know, to to have that in your life, and it's it's really a sense of pride without being too boastful and prideful um that you know what i i created that and whether it was on purpose or not you know i hope you're proud of being a parent let's just say that because that in among it's in amongst itself is something to be proud of especially if you know they are you know just really killing it at school they're you know, they become emotionally and, you know, intelligent with their emotions uh, and they're not clearly struggling uh, because and, and and if they are, then it, it's a, a thing to work on with them and, your, and yourself. So it's just the, the challenge too. It, it's never easy, right? Okay. And I catch myself sometimes wishing for a simpler path in parenting you know i wish my my kids weren't so emotional i wish they would just listen but wouldn't that be boring if they were like robots and did everything oh i I think it'd definitely be i think it would definitely be boring if they were like robots and have no emotions or anything um right as much as we like to complain about it where they're like "Uh, i just wish they would stop crying yeah um, you know sometimes i feel like i mean that's per- it's it's a downfall <laughs> it's well, a downfall of being yeah. a parent when you have to deal with their i guess unexplained crying or crying for no reason right um or but they always have that reason they just don't know how to explain it to you so right they sit here and start whimpering or whatnot uh and they're trying to come up with this reason as to why they're crying but you just don't want to hear it because to to you now as a parent, it is just an excuse. And you just, I mean, that's, that's how it's been for me recently. And I feel like that's not exactly a very heartfelt moment or heartwarming. I'm the same way with my children. It's like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really listening to them. I'm just saying you guys are just coming up with an excuse, which I mean, their excuse could really be the reason that they are crying. Like, um, the other day, um, my son Kane, we were outside playing with that nice weather that we had, and he was riding his bike, and he was taking a, taking a ramp that he has that we got him for, like, a Christmas present or something like that a while back. Like a bike um, ramp? A bike, skateboard ramp, yeah. That, you cool. Know, just one of those at-home skate park ramps. Um, well, he was riding his bike and his, the tread or the, yeah, the treads on his wheels or tires were really bad. So all of a sudden he takes, he jumps over the, or jumps off the ramp and his back wheel popped. Like there's a hole in that wheel from where, where he landed. Yeah. And he's like, he put his bike away and he's like, my wheel popped. I'm like, Oh, okay. Well, we could just fill it up. He's like, 
No, it popped. And he was in tears. Because we don't have any spare tires around the house. You know, we don't carry spare tires like that for him. So he was just in a lot of tears for that. And just like, I'm sorry, bud. I mean, you don't necessarily have to cry every time something bad happens, though, either. Yeah, I we mean, can, you know, he's, we can figure it out. Yeah, it's just one of those things where, though, he's still very emotional at that point. Like, his emotions do run very high when something like that does happen. Or, like, you know, you can definitely see him become very, very sad. Um, because now he's let down. Yeah. Now he's lost something that he had fun doing. So, I mean, I get why he was sad. But I think sometimes there's a point now, granted, I know I was a kid and I'm trying to remember what it was like when I was a kid when things like that happened. If I did that, can I truly remember? No, because maybe I blocked it out because of how traumatic of an experience it was. But um, sometimes the emotions do run a little high or um, I feel like they do get carried away sometimes. But you know what? That's another, you know, to turn it into a reason I like being a dad or being a daddy here is because you can help them live through that experience, help them find proper ways to cope with what they're going through rather than being somebody that, I mean, granted, yes, you can help them develop their coping mechanisms. Um, Rather than just letting them be and then all of a sudden shutting down. Uh, because shutting down is not necessarily the greatest coping mechanism at all. No. Yeah, because what what does it do? It just, I mean, so maybe certain way, certain times shutting down and becoming like a silent or a hermit or something is the appropriate coping mechanism. Um, but I don't think it's for that every situation. I think I think situations differ um, and we want, you know, we want to develop our kids into handling it the right way. So always being them being there for them. I know you mentioned being humble as well or being um, selfless. In a way, yep. I know it can be diff. I know it can be difficult as well. You want to be selfless, but at, this, uh, at the same time, you want to do things for yourself. Um you know, I I think to me the biggest, though, the biggest perk of being a father, the unconditional love you give your children. They are your children. You will love and them if you're no lucky, matter what they do. Right. And if you're lucky, you receive it back. Like, yeah. you know, it, they're in the girls are in this habit where they just stop and look up and, you know, I love you, dad. Like, that just mm. can't. Oh, I that. love here. I love hearing that from my children, too. It, you know, there is no. There is no cue or, right. you know, mom or dad don't hint saying, OK, go tell mom you love her or love her or anything like that. Like, it's just. They want to tell me they love me. Do I feel like my body at that point does get a little, I'll say I do feel like the nerves or the chill from it because it's unconditional. They didn't yep. come up to me or they didn't just, it was, it wasn't forced. Right. And that just means a lot. It means what what it means to me is the fact that they understand they know that I'm doing the best I can for them and they appreciate me for it. That just me you know, that just means the world when they're able to say it without somebody prompting them to do it. Because, I mean, yes, I still, it still feels good when it's prompted, but it feels a hell of a lot better when it's not. When it's not, yeah. 
Yeah, I agree. It just, I walk up to you and say, I love you, well, you know, and it's not prompted. It's just like, what are, what, who are you and what have you done with my son? Or what have right. you done with my daughter? <laughs> but at the same time, it's like, I know I'm, you know, obviously joking, right? But at this, you know, at the same time, I know it just felt so good. It's it's that warm feeling. It's like my heart grew three sizes. So, um, what's another thing? Do you have anything else or any other perks or things you enjoy about being a father? I mean, the the journey those activities. Yeah, the, the the activities that you you enjoy, and then hopefully they get to enjoy them as well. That's rewarding. That you guys can have that bonding together, and then just finally it, the journey. Uh, I know I I really need to you know take a step back a lot and realize that it's it's not the destination; it's mm -hmm. the journey that we take with our kids, and I wouldn't trade that for the world. Oh, I don't think I would either. I don't think I could either. What were you? Um, so just to think, uh, you, you've nailed it right on the head, the journey, um, the activities, you know, uh, another, I'll call it impromptu, impromptu, really, just when as much as I know my kids have been into video games recently, but the idea or the impromptuness of them wanting to go outside and spend time outside um, and then asking me to play with them outside. Like the other day we were outside playing with the ball. Just again, the interaction that they are looking for. They want to include their parent in yep. the activity. Um, you know, and as much as I love playing with them, right? We're, we're playing monkey in the middle a little bit here. Just seeing, even even though it may seem like you, a child or like if you're an adult and you're playing and you're, you know, you're the one that's not in the middle, right? And you see the child trying to get the ball from you and you're just like, you feel like you're picking on them a little bit because you have the height on them. Yeah. But at the same time, you see them just with the biggest smile on their face, the biggest joy because they're having fun doing this activity with you. Right. Uh, to me, just wa looking at a child, smiling, laughing, enjoying it. Heck hell earlier. Um, this week, uh, Nico was watching, or my parents were watching Nico, and my mom sent me some photos of um, of him playing at their house. They went to the park. They had he had so much fun. He ended up when they were back at the house. He ended up taking a stool, like one of those bar stools, put it on his head. Started Hold on, let's see if I can find that here. Just because, you know, it's awesome. Oh, I'm sorry. It was so cute. Oh, God. Nice. He put it on his head. And my mom put the context in of this. The stool grew legs and learned to walk and talk. <laughs> it came to life like a beauty and a beast. <laughs> Yeah, it came to life. An inanimate object came to life. <laughs> but um, no, I mean, just watching my children have so much fun outside, enjoying, just being able to enjoy the little things in life. That it means the world to me as a parent, as a dad. Yeah. So, I mean,. And not to mention, you know what else makes me happy? What? Well, another thing I like being about daddy. The jokes. dad jokes. Yeah. The jokes. Yep. I love being able to all of a sudden just rip some jokes, watching people. I mean, hell, the other day, 
I'll, I'll share this because this, this, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to shed some light on people, and actually, this was one of the jokes I did. I went into one of our like at work. I went into one of the rooms, turned off the light, only to turn it back on and on the coworker, and said, "Hey, I just wanted to shed some shed some light on your day." Oh, brother! <laughs> did they find it amusing? They did. They did actually. Yeah. And then somebody else told me like to go on break. I'm like, oh, I don't have a Kit Kat bar. Oh my god. <laughs> or to take a break. I was like, I don't have a Kit Kat bar. You got a Kit Kat? Nope. Can't take a break. <laughs> oh god. So you want to hear some jokes just uh mm-hmm. since they're since we're on the topic of dad and Let's do it. obviously, you know, these do bring some joy to us. Oh, well, at least me. Uh, a cheese factory exploded downtown. Debris is all over the streets. Debris. 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 Get uh, the debris. Get the debris. Let's see. There's another one over here somewhere. Nope, I don't like that one. I'm a big dreamer, so I always hit the snooze button. Yeah, I did that this morning. Jesus. Yeah? You hit the snooze button? Oh, yeah. I'm dreaming a lot more, too, now, so it's become very interesting. There you go. That it, it, it's a good thing. It means you're getting a decent amount of REM sleep, though. Yep. Which, that's where it always happens, so. Um, and did you know I used to have a fear of speed bumps? No. But I'm slowly getting over it. <laughs> okay, I gotta see if I can find these. Oh, it's gonna drive me nuts now because I've been share I've been saving some TikTok videos. Um let's see if I can find them. Hold on. My likes. Okay. I, oh, I have Enjoy it while likes. it lasts. Hopefully they don't take that freedom away from us. I don't think they will. Here we go. If they did it, they're quiet. absolutely insane. If they did, they we you know if they did take it away, they'd be insane because that'd yeah, be right. blatantly obvious that they're screwing us over in every possible way. Yeah. Okay. So here, I think this. I'm, I'll make this the last one. Uh, if you get sick at the airport, it could be a terminal illness. <laughs> Love it. Yep. another good one which terminal did you get sick in i don't know i was getting on my flight and i was getting sick and it was terminal d well is it terminal I, they haven't said yet <laughs> i went to the doctor they came back and said you have a problem i said what they said i was deaf <sighs> i still responded uh... what <laughs> We seem to have a you see. See, here's your problem. What's the problem? Yeah, there's there's some good do- dad jokes out there like that. How do you how do you prepare your steak? Uh, we usually cook it. Yeah. <laughs> we usually put usually. it on the grill. Uh, I think my I don't know. I've always been enjoying this one though, where it's like. The kid is sitting with uh, with their dad reading a book, and the kid then says, "Can I have a bookmark?" Dad's response: After six years, the kid, you know, after six years, the kid still doesn't know my name is Steve. That that's good. Uh-huh. I like that one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can my change name the not name. Mark. Yeah, it's not Mark. But all right, folks. Hopefully you enjoyed this one of perks of being a daddy. Yeah, what are your perks? Let us know, please. Let us know. Comment. Comment, like, subscribe. Okay, you don't have to really subscribe, but you can on our YouTube channel. You can. Channel. It's an option. Um, but yeah, if uh, you'll see some clips on TikTok as well. You can always hit that like, follow. Thank you for everybody that does that already here. Much appreciative. Um, you're helping us grow in the TikTok verse. Uh, I will also, since Jared is now part of the TikTok world, 
I, I think I'll actually tag you. Yeah, go ahead. I'm, I'm really not familiar on how that app works yet. So I got you, though. Don't worry. All right. Or this, thanks. Maybe your wife will get you too on that. I know you said you got it just because she sends you a lot of videos, but we'll take care of it from there. So, all right, folks, this was Perks of Being Daddy from Leashed Dad's podcast. Enjoy it, and we'll see you next time.